This short video is designed to assist you to carry out the Skoda rear wheel bearing recall campaign. The repair instructions require you to check the condition of both rear wheel bearing assemblies. The precise repair instructions plus a list of the affected vehicles and their chassis ranges will be found in the recall bulletin. The bulletin must always be referred to while carrying out the repairs. Furthermore, please remember these important points which are essential for a long service life of the rear wheel bearings. Keep all components clean. Grease the bearings and seal properly. Ensure the seal and grease cap are fitted correctly. Make sure that the bearings are adjusted accurately. And here are some other important points to consider while carrying out the repairs. Before starting work, make sure that the wheel arch is clear of loose dirt. Never reuse a contaminated wheel bearing or attempt to wash it out. All removed parts must be placed on a perfectly clean surface. And take care not to accidentally drop the bearings. Firstly, remove the wheel. Release the self-adjusting brake mechanism by inserting a screwdriver through one of the wheel bolt holes and push up the adjusting wedge. Take off the grease cap using the special tool. This avoids damaging the cap. A damaged cap must always be replaced to prevent water from entering the bearings. Remove the split pin nut and washer. Pull off the brake drum assembly and place it on a clean area. Take care not to drop the outer roller bearing when removing the drum. If the bearing is accidentally dropped, it must be replaced. To avoid brake dust entering the bearings, use a clean piece of cloth and block the opening to the hub. Next, carefully remove any brake dust from the drum and brake shoes. Prise off the seal with a screwdriver or large spanner. Take care not to damage the sealing surface of the brake drum. It's important to remember that the seal must always be replaced. Remove the inner roller bearing and place it on a clean surface. Clean both inner and outer bearing rings and carefully examine them for damage and corrosion. Likewise, check the inner and outer roller bearings for damage and corrosion. Look for metal particles on the rollers and cages as this indicates that the inside of the bearing is beginning to break up. If either bearing shows signs of damage or corrosion, then the complete bearing must be replaced. It's not, however, necessary to replace the second bearing if only one is defective. On the other hand, if one bearing has totally collapsed or shows signs of extreme wear, then both complete bearings must always be renewed. If either bearing requires replacement, use the special tools to remove and refit the bearing rings. If replacing only the inner bearing, you will need to use the special tool MP5-523 in conjunction with a suitable workshop tool. 
The recall bulletin describes all the special tools required and how best to use them. Clean the stub axle and carefully examine the surface where the rubber seal runs. If the surface is slightly corroded, then this can be smoothed down by carefully rubbing it with oiled 400 grade wet and dry paper. However, if the stub axle shows heavy corrosion and or grooves around the area where the seal runs, then it must be replaced. When replacing the stub axle, ensure that all mating surfaces are clean. On reassembly, renew all bolts and washers, making sure that the washers are fitted with their concave surface facing towards the brake backplate. The bolts should be tightened to a torque of 60 newton meters. Having thoroughly checked and replaced any defective components, you are ready to reassemble the hub. Use between 15 and 20 grams of grease and fill the chamber between the inner and outer bearings. Pack the inner roller bearing race with grease and place it into the hub. You are now ready to fit the seal. It's essential that only a new seal is fitted, on no account reuse the old one. There's also an important point to note about how it's fitted. If a new stub axle has been fitted, then the seal must be pressed in so that it stands proud of the hub by 1.3 millimetres. For this reason, it's essential that only the new special tool MP5-521-1 is used to install the seal. If the stub axle has not been replaced, then the new seal must be fitted so that it is flush with the hub. In this case, the special tool MP5-521 should be used. In either case, take care not to damage the seal when fitting it. Having installed the seal, fill the area between the seal's two lips with grease. The hub is then ready for reassembly onto the stub axle. To reduce the risk of damaging the seal when lifting the drum onto the axle, Cover the stub axle threads with insulation tape. Carefully line up the hole in the drum with the end of the stub axle and slide the drum into position. Remove the insulation tape and refit the outer bearing, ensuring that it too has been filled with grease. Remove any grease from the face of the bearing. You're now ready to fit the washer and nut. It's essential that a new washer is fitted and that its contact face is also free of any grease. Install and tighten the nut to settle the bearings. Spin the drum to ensure that it rotates freely. Now slacken the nut sufficiently so that the washer can just be moved from side to side using a screwdriver and finger pressure. The washer must not be levered, for example by twisting the screwdriver. Once the adjustment is correct, Fit the castellated washer and install a new split pin.
making sure that the grease cap is not damaged. Fill it with grease and refit the cap. To avoid damaging the cap, use the special tool MP5-520. To indicate that the recall action has been completed, add a yellow paint mark to the grease cap. Refit the road wheel. And before moving the car, press the brake pedal several times to reset the self-adjusting brake mechanism. In this short video, we have been working on the bearings of only one rear wheel. Therefore, don't forget that the procedure must be repeated for the remaining rear wheel. And finally, don't forget, even if the bearings show no sign of damage, on reassembly you must always fit a new seal, washer and split pin.